Welcome to another edition of the Red Ritter Outfitter Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the Mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, we're here in the middle of beautiful Texas Tech campus. It's gorgeous weather right now. That nice West Texas breeze, sun, everything is just as nice as it could be. Uh, but how are you today? Great, man. You know, it feels feels like fall. It feels like football. Uh, got one win in the bag uh, and a nice looking win at that. So, uh, you know, feeling, feeling real good right now. And we got some good questions this week. All right, Joe, the first question comes from Jay Will 2011 He says uh, he sees Nisby getting a lot of touches this week and next week in practice to prepare for, you know, the D for Balazs. Do we see that as well? And do we think he'll be in game condition for the time Arizona State rolls into town? Yeah, well, he'll definitely uh, be in condition. I, I don't have any doubt about that. In fact, last time that I got to talk a little bit with Cliff, asked him that very question about his uh, condition and his stamina at this point in his career. And he's confirmed that he's capable of running the ball 20 times in a game right now. Uh, so assuming he's straight up with that, then uh, the guy's conditioning and stamina are in pretty good shape and should be even better uh, by Arizona State. Uh, now, as far as Balage goes, I, I probably, and I don't want to make light of Jay Will's question or anything, but I think maybe, uh, because of the trauma in Tempe last year. Maybe we've uh, sort of blown up Balage bigger than he really is. He's not that great of a back. I mean, yeah, he's he, a good running back, though, I think. Okay. He's okay. Uh, but he, I mean, after that Tech game, he didn't do a great deal against New Mexico State this year, ran for 79 yards it's and averaged show. a little bit over four yards a carry. He's pretty good around the goal line. Yeah. Uh, but I, he's not, uh, he's no Adrian Peterson or anything like oh, that. No. Yeah. Uh, nothing close to it. So I, I think the tech is going to be more than ready uh, to take care of Balage, and um, I think they're going to do a good job on him. Well, I don't know if uh, they'll be running Nisby a lot in practice to get ready for Balage necessarily. Uh, I, I think they're ready, like you said. They've, the, the trauma. Like I remember we talked to Jordan Brooks. That was kind of his awakening, rude awakening to Power 5 football. I, I do believe, I know this is cliche, but I do believe they've had this circled on their calendar. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be ready for this. Um, now, I still think Balazs and, uh, you know, they have a couple of really good running backs, actually. Uh, they have a freshman, Eno Benjamin, from, from Texas, who's pretty good, too. I think they're going to be able to run the ball some. Now, are they just going to run it right down the freeway like nobody's there, you know, like a wide-open freeway? No, uh, I, I don't think so. I think Tech's going to be improved this year, uh, which is, I guess, I suppose isn't saying just a whole lot. But uh, as far as Nisby per se, I do think the conditioning is kind of overblown a little bit as much as I think uh, he has like a, a little bit of a toe injury. He has a, a foot injury, a minor one that's kind of holding him back a little bit. If you go back and watch the, the video, you can see him kind of hobble a little bit. And a couple of people I've talked to confirm, yeah, he does have a little, a little something. I don't think it's anything that's going to hold him out. I think actually, if anything, they may keep him off his foot a little bit to make sure he's ready to go. Uh, you know, by Arizona State, and I do think he will be ready. And I think he's gonna. It may we may be talking more about Desmond Nisby uh, yeah. coming out of this game than Balage. Yeah, he may do a Balage on Arizona State. Well, that would be amazing. All right, Reckham CRV wants to know who we think uh, the best position group was against Eastern Washington, and which one needs to improve the most by the Arizona State game. Uh, best wide receivers, yeah. uh, because they were basically perfect. Yeah, uh, they blocked well. Uh, caught everything that came their direction. Literally Touched everything. Them. Like, they did not drop a pass to hit their hands. Did not drop a yeah. pass. I mean, if you want to be really, really technical about it, I mean, there was the one long pass to, to Dylan Cantrell that went off his fingertips. I think oh, that was a little yeah. bit long. Yeah. I, I didn't consider that a drop. That's kind of a borderline deal. But bottom line, uh, receivers just played an outstanding game. Uh, no question about it. So I think they were the, the best group. Uh, as far as the one that needs to improve, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to find anything really, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the offensive line for the simple reason that they got off to the slow start. I, I think yeah. the offensive line play probably more than anything uh, explains why the offense had those first bad three series to start the game. And they need to be on point uh, right from the get-go against yeah. Arizona State. And, so, and if they do that, that's considerable improvement. So uh, that's my answer there. I agree with you on the wide receivers. Uh, I'm going to say uh, who needs to – to improve is actually the defensive line. I think that may surprise you because they played well in the first week, but they're going to have to 
raise their level to to another level, the raise their play to another level because Arizona State is going to bring a whole nother level as far as rushing attack. That's what they really want to do, and they're going to line up and try and just run over Texas Tech. Why wouldn't you? You know, after last year, and Texas Tech's going to have to stop them not once, twice, three times. They're going to have to just stop them. They're going to have to, or at least slow them down enough to where they can outscore them. And so it's going to be mono and mono. It's going to be a test, you know. They're going to test their manhood, and I think Tech is going to answer the challenge, but they're going to have to step. They're going to have to step up their play in order to do so. All right, you're going to like this one, Joe. Texan asks, uh, which loss gave you more pleasure, the horns, the ags, or the bears? I'm going to go ahead and jump in there, and I'm going to say the aggies. I sh I, it should be the bears. It should be Baylor. But I just I really hate the aggies. And the way they lost was just classic, the way they just the meltdown and everything. So uh, for me, it's the aggies. Well, you know where I probably I'm going. Uh, <laughs> going down to Austin. Yep. Uh, Can't you know, believe neither one of us are saying Baylor. Wow. Because yeah. we both really loathe Baylor. But yeah, I mean, it, well, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You know, with any of these guys. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, I just, I just, I've got a special kind of a hate. personal. <laughs> yeah, hate's not a big enough word. You know, I mean, it really isn't. But uh, uh, yeah, it's oh, it's always great to see the mighty uh, brought down. You know, uh, and. Uh, you know, also I for what for some crazy reason I kind of like Maryland. I don't know why. Uh, so and also I got, actually got to watch that game. I didn't get to watch any of the A and M and Baylor games. Uh, I saw that early score from A and M, and it looked like A and M was just walking off with it. And so yeah. I tuned out at that point, yeah. figuring that it was over. With Baylor, I had a chance to, to watch it, but I thought, well, they're playing Liberty. So why do I even yeah. need to turn it on, you know? And then wake up the next morning, and what do you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, love that Texas loss. I must say. You like some of them Yankee schools, yeah. which I guess is Maryland considered a Yankee school. You know, it was Maryland. Baltimore is like right. a Yankee town. Well, I mean, Maryland was in the Confederacy for the Civil War, which technically is supposed to. But that was a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I consider basically uh, at this point Maryland to be Yankee yeah. Yankee country. Yeah, me too. Panther Cat wants to know if we think there will be any changes in the secondary. Um, not at this point. I I, I don't think so just yet. I mean, I think uh, I don't think any of the starters played poorly you know I, I think there were a uh, play here and there yeah. that they would like back uh, but in general I thought that the, the secondary and particularly the safeties uh, really really kind of knocked it out of the park uh, now I'm sure everybody is like okay what about Willie Sykes yeah, yeah. you know what about Jalen Lane yeah. uh, and both of those guys really look good coming off the bench but I don't think and, and most coaches are not very quick to pull the hook you know yeah. on somebody particularly when you're coming off a nice win like yeah. that so I don't think they change anything right now I think that secondary uh, stays the same. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, you could maybe change throw in Lane or uh, Willie's, but why? The rotation worked well last time. Let's keep everybody's confidence up, you know? DH Tech wants to know if we are feeling inclined at all to change our preseason predictions, and if we do change it, which wins do we add, will we add? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I was five and seven, five and seven for Tech coming into the yeah. season, and I'm, I'm fighting the temptation, and I'm, gonna, I'm still sticking at five and seven. All right, but I, let me tell you something. I mean, I am really, really uh, on the edge of moving the Texas game and the Houston game into the win column for Texas Tech, particularly with what happened down in Austin. Sure. Uh, I think you can make a very strong case at this point uh, that Tech deserves will will win both of those games. But I'm going to go ahead and wait and see what happens against Arizona State. If they put the wood to Arizona State, then it's 7-5, uh, probably minimum in my, in my book at that point. But we'll just have to wait and see. Well, for me, the next time I pick Tech to win in Austin will be the, the first time, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, I don't think uh, it's not happening this year mm. just because of the history. You know, uh, Tech has gone into Austin or, you know, like last year played really bad – uh, UT teams and found a way to loss to them for what it, for a number of reasons when Tech was the better team. So I'm just not, I, I get what you're saying. I'm just not ready just to count Texas as a as a win yet. Um, Houston now, if they beat if Tech beats Arizona State, I'm not going to change. I'm still not going to change because I had Tech beating Eastern Washington and beating Arizona State and getting the six wins. So they still be on track even if they look better. You know, it's a week to week game. So. Uh, if they beat Houston now, they're obviously a game ahead on my schedule, so I have to start changing things. I have them beating uh, Eastern Washington, Arizona State, Iowa State, Kansas, Baylor, who, I, of course, I still think that's a win, and TCU. And despite their good performance against Jackson State, yeah, I still think Tech beats TCU this, this year, especially since it's at home here at the Jones. 
All right, John Galt for Texas Tech asks, uh, can we expect to see more two-back sets with Mason Reed dropping the hammer as a blocker and surprising teams as a receiver like the big backs uh, did back in the Leach era? First off, I love that two-back set. We said we wanted to see it. Yeah. We got to see it, and it did not disappoint. So I do think we will see it, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, I hope it's uh, used more often. Uh, I mean, if Cliff is serious, uh, about wanting to run the football almost as much as he want, he pass it, which he's yeah. he's gone on record as saying. Uh, then uh, you know you put Reed and Nisby in the backfield at the same same, same time. Uh, that gives you a serious power dimension to your ground game, and uh, give, gives you a very legitimate ground game. And and you know that's that's the step uh, to being able to run the ball effectively. I think, and uh, if you can run it effectively, you're going to run it more. So uh, I hope we see more of this, and I and I, I do think it's possible. Red Ritter KA want, says he wants to know if Tech is going to sell those Spike Dyke helmet stickers. No. Um, when I last time last week when I spoke with uh, a couple officials with Tech, they said as of right now they are not for sale. That could change, but they don't expect it to. They don't have any reason to believe it's going to uh, as of right now. So I bet it will. If y'all make enough noise about it, or we make enough noise about it, if they could, if the athletic department can make some money off of it, uh, not to to like say they would do that to like disparage Spike's name or anything, but if y'all want it and they can make some money off of it, then why not? You know, I, I think they'll make it happen. Panther Cat asks, uh, after Brooks and Allen, who comes in next at linebacker? Stringer and Taylor? How is Jeffers figuring into the mix? I'll jump in there. Taylor, well Stringer and Taylor were the first two off on Saturday, and Taylor actually was the one who cleaned up that fourth and short that Jordan Brooks shot through the gap and mm -hmm. bumped it outside, and him and Jason were the ones who actually cleaned it up. So I mean, he I mean he looked good. Everybody who was out there Saturday was making plays pretty much, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, but when Jeffers was in there, man, both on kickoff and then at linebacker, he looked pretty good too. I was watching him specifically on film today, uh, man. So I think at some point this year I would, and it's going to depend on the personnel. If you're going against more of a thumper team, you're going to want Jeffers in there. If it's more of a team that likes to attack you in the flats and stuff, and and likes to the zone bust you, I think you're going to go with Christian Taylor because he's probably better in coverage at this point. But that's my two cents. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's that's your five linebackers right there yeah. that they feel good about. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good-looking linebacker core, I must yeah, say. It which, is. Which, which, you haven't been able to say that about Tech for a long time. time. We're like harmonizing now. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it happens after what four years to start harmonizing. All right. Okay. Better than rock 'em sock 'em, I guess, huh? <laughs> All right. Juice Box has the final question. He wants to know: Is Jesse Brown getting more looks with uh, Joe Wallace forced into a redshirt this year? I mean, he did play some, but so did uh, Quentin Yance, and they both looked good. Like I said, it seemed like everybody who played Saturday uh, made at least one play. But yeah, Jesse Brown was in there, but. Like I, you pointed out in one of your stories, I believe it was the, what was it, the double take? Mm -hmm. That uh, Yance was making some plays there late, so uh, it's looking pretty good. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, again, yeah, the interior of the D-line uh, looking fairly stout. I mean, uh, Yance, I think, was a guy that probably uh, a lot of people said is kind of an afterthought, Me sort too. of a, yeah. a filler, and maybe even the coaches kind of felt that way. They needed another body just in case, but uh, you know, sometimes these guys turn out to be a lot better than you think. Paul Staywars being the classic example of that yeah. uh, so maybe you have the same sort of deal uh, with Yance in there and uh, Brown uh, you know um, hard to say at this point but uh, I, there's no reason why he couldn't at least get some reps from time to time yeah I mean he got meaningful reps in the SEC for A&M last year so then he left the dark side joined the Rebel Alliance thank thankfully you probably don't have no idea what I'm talking about uh, but yeah Star Wars Wow! And we're, hey, that's it. We're leaving on a high note. Great stuff from you, as always, Mighty Joe. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.